All right. So we see here that I have um, some die stable coin. I've got five hundred and seventy-two dollars worth. So five hundred and seventy. Uh, if you see in the top left, it's an ERC twenty, which is a Ethereum token. Essentially, I have to use Ethereum uh, to send this uh, to do anything with this coin. So I have to have some Ethereum as well here. Um, but we're going to this smart chain here, these uh, BNB, um, because if you see like uh, up in the top left corner, it says BET20. So that is um, Binance's version of the Ethereum. So they're completely separate networks. They do not communicate whatsoever. So now we have to do what we call a bridge. And what that does is if you, uh, it sends you to Binance, which again, you have to have a, a VPN. And also, considering it's easiest to do this uh, through the built-in um, decentralized application runner, um, it's easiest to do these things uh, with a computer, uh, like holding up the QR code or the address that you're going to deposit into. Because as soon as you get out of this, it, it's going to like reload everything every time. I'm not really quite sure why it does that, but it is what it is. So we're going to get some a bet version. We're going to convert this ERC20 to a BEP20 up in the top left. That's what we want because it'll be able to communicate with that new network. Then we'll be able to swap it out for those coins that I showed you and go from there. So we're just gonna, uh, we've already got a predetermined amount of die that it is looking for. We put 570, we're gonna set it all. And uh, we're gonna just do the QR code. Let's double check. That is correct. Okay, so that will send die to that address and they're waiting on it for the exchange. As I said, um, sending this die is going to require some Ethereum. So if you see that network fee, uh, $30. Expensive. Very expensive. It should not be that expensive. The network's congested. That's a lot of the reason as to why we're switching over to this uh, BEP token as well. Because uh, I don't want to pay $30 for a transaction every time. Whereas the BEP ones are a dollar. So, because this is a, a huge loss over time, uh, and this is just one transaction. If I want to pull it out, I don't want to pay $30 so well again. We'll just convert it and call it a day. So, we sent the transaction, and now the transaction is pending. And once it gets some confirmations, uh, it will, usually about one to three, sometimes three to six. Uh, but it will be credited to my wallet and then we'll move forward from there. Okay, so it took us about three minutes to receive uh, that die. We got it after uh, four confirmations. We sent it at uh, 9.36. We got it at almost 9.39. So now we have our die that is now in BEP20 format. We can use this. We can exchange this. So, there's multiple ways we could go about this. Um, I'm going to recommend trying to directly exchange for the coin that we want. So, um, we're going to go to our little blizzard thing here. And here's our blizzard pool. We're going to trade and exchange. Yes, I understand. So it's just saying, hey, peep, anyone can create a, a token and screw you over. So just be mindful of your tokens. So, all right, now we're looking to swap. Now we want to swap our die that we just got. Uh, well, we're not connected with our wallet, I guess. Uh, so, first, before that, we want to connect our wallet. We are using Trust Wallet. 
So there's our die. We got the the balance. There we go. So we are able to directly, but it's asking us to approve the die. Like um, I'm not really quite sure what this is for, but it kind of like is enabling uh, you to use that asset on this network um, in relation to your wallet. I don't know. You've got to like send money in order to enable these uh, features. So it's going to be 15 cents, which, you know, that's not bad at all. Uh, Ethereum, it would have been like $20. So I'm going to approve that. So now that engages a smart contract to where um, when I go to do this swap, it's going to where it's decentralized, that I guess that's the way that it has to go about it. So we're going to hit swap. And we are fortunately... Oh, so the price updated. Except... Oh, we got more. Nice. I think. Unless I just tricked myself. So it looks like they're going to try to take the fee from the die. Darn it, stop doing that. So we're going to confirm that swap. Oh, maybe not. Okay, they're taking the fee from my BNB, which is the smart contract one, I believe, I hope. And it looks like we have enough, so I'm going to hit approve. The transaction's been submitted, and we can view it and verify it on that... Um, that scan right there and that link. So that's happened or pin oh no, we got it. See? Blizzard is now that and we can verify by going back. Go all the way back. And we should be able to refresh. Oh, there it is. So this doesn't have a uh, value directly in the wallet because it doesn't know where to pull its value, but the website that we use it on does. So now we can go to our blizzard pool. We can go to our caves. And now we can deposit more. So we can max that out. Confirm it. And see, every action you do has a fee. And that's where this can get really, really expensive. If you, that's why you want to try to do things in as little of transactions as possible. So now we have this staked. Um, it'll compound, uh, I believe if we hit harvest, it'll go directly to our wallet. And, uh, if we hit compound, it'll go into this, uh, state here. So right now, this coin is 5664 down there at the bottom. And we can trade it out for another coin that we want. We can probably, yep, swap it around like that. And BNB &B sells for like $200 a coin. So we can swap it all to that, pay a little fee, and we're done. And then, well, not necessarily done. The next step would be to convert it into a coin um, that you can sell on Coinbase or PayPal. And at that point, then you're done. Well, that's everything from here, and that's pretty much the how-to on how to do all that. You just got to first, you know, find a way to put your U.S. dollars into, um, you know, one of these coins to where you can... Uh, do it. I, I like the stable coins because even though I had to pay a massive $30 fee to send that $570... Uh, the value of my coin stayed the same. 
So I know that it's going to be, you know, $540 going into that minus the additional fees. So this, if I were to like, you know, transfer it over to like Bitcoin or something of that nature, it could go up and that would be great. Or it could go down and that would be bad. So that's essentially it. Uh, I don't think that explained anything, but just kind of showed how I do it, how I do my thing. Uh, that's how we get to where we need to be.